but eventually, yes, everybody will have sort of a top tier batch that they will sell at a premium. Talking about battery packs today in aviation with our favorite battery expert, Ash. And the first question, will we see specific battery architecture in aviation or will it always be kind of the EV architecture going forward? It's an interesting question. And what I would say is that the standards for aviation applications is always a little bit higher than what you see for road going applications. And that's mainly because of safety and reliability. And so in every production line, there's always a way to grade cells in terms of their compliance or their consistency of performance. The best A-grade cells essentially would go towards aviation applications and eVTOLs or military applications. Uh, and that's the same thing that we're seeing for hydrogen fuel cells as well. The fuel cells in automotive applications are pretty much unchanged for a long time. But the ones going into aviation applications have really high power densities that we haven't seen in the automotive sector. So they are essentially built to a higher standard. The structural design of the pack will be very custom made to the eVTOL application, but they will essentially get the cream of the batch, the best of the production line for these cells. And, and Ash, I mean, that reminds me uh, of the 90s when we got our first custom homemade computer where we bought the chips, basically the, the CPU, the central processing unit. So your Intel and you had the 486 and you could buy it with 33 megahertz or 66 or even 90, I think was the highest. Basically the Intel would have one production batch and then they would see what the quality is, but the number of transistors, that was all more or less the same. Exactly, that's what you see today. Um, AMD does it, for example. A lot of AMD processing lines have eight cores to begin with. So the best of the batch are branded as uh, Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9. And then those that have some defects get branded as a six core or a four core processor. So the same thing will happen with battery manufacturing supply chains. So Ash, quick follow-up question on that one regarding secondary markets for batteries. We were of course talking about that segmentation where if you have a small defect in the battery, it will result in a lower quality product, exactly like we see in computer chips currently. But will there also be a secondary market where you can get significantly higher quality batteries if you're willing to overpay for that? For example, for a Joby application like we were just talking about. Yes, and I think this secondary market already exists. And and it's been happening underground for a long time for military and medical applications, actually. There are some big manufacturers out there that have specific product lines or business lines for these secondary markets. The newer manufacturers that are building facilities very fast, like North Vault or Freya, for example, I think they are too busy right now getting their production chains in order to segment their markets and offer a differentiated product. But eventually, yes, everybody will have sort of a top tier batch that they will sell at a premium to these mission critical applications like Joby, for example. Talking about secondary market, you just mentioned that in aviation, the requirements will be higher and also the lifetime, the number of load cycles that a battery will be used for will be shorter in aviation. These are critical minerals, so we, we should just remine what we've already mined out of these battery packs, right? And if 90% or 95% of them are reusable through existing battery recycling facilities, then there will be a business case for them to take them off your hands and, and recycle them. And Ash, as we are talking about recycling now, we've recently heard for a couple of materials like graphite that they are unrecyclable. Is it actually true? Or are all materials recoverable from batteries? So graphite is recyclable in to other forms of graphite that are of lower quality and lower consistency. Trying to recycle graphite to the same level of consistency is probably a bit problematic right now. So that's why new graphite is preferred. There's still a lot of work to be done in trying to get the consistency of the particles in, in battery grade graphite to be the same. And what about the older materials like lithium, nickel, are those all easily recyclable? Or is that also a challenge we'll have to, uh, to solve over the next couple of decades? No, these are easily recyclable. A lot of them are done through chemical processes, which means that the moment you turn it into a compound, you attach it to another chemical, you're resetting the material back to its pure molecule. So that's not an issue. All right, I guess that's a very clear future where we'll recycle batteries that come from a high demand application like an eVTOL for, for example, electric vehicles and battery storage. And then at the end of the life cycle of a battery, hopefully we'll have good recycling technologies in place to recover those materials like you just described, Ash. Yeah, I hope so. There should be as much as possible a circular ecosystem built around all these uh, high demand uh, industries for batteries. Batteries.